Hi, welcome to International Hawaii on ThinkTech, where we showcase local import and export companies along with the rest of the trade industry. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and today we're chatting with Brian Suzuki of Hawaii Air Cargo. Hi, Brian. Thanks so much for Hi, joining uh, me. <laughs> well, aloha, and thank you for inviting me. Yeah. I wanted to learn more about Hawaii Air Cargo and how is the business going? Could you briefly let us know um, when you started the business and how you got it started? Okay, real briefly, I started back in the 60s working for an airline called Pan American World Airways. Wow. I'm no longer there, but I learned a lot, not only passing service, but um, the biggest thing from back then, besides learning the trade uh, and going into cargo and, and cargo management for Pan American, I made friends with all the airlines, and that helped <laughs> after, later on, I'll, I'll explain. So anyway, uh, after learning all about that, I had the opportunity to uh, take over the company called Hawaii Air Cargo. They were going to, they were real close to bankruptcy. They had some mm. issues, and uh, they were a huge company, but the internal organi organism or organization was having problems. So uh, I went over there after three months, I said, you know, you, you can make money, but uh, there's some issues that need to be corrected. So the person made me an offer and I took it. I said, okay, so <laughs> 1982 in January, I took over Hawaii Air Cargo as the owner and uh, president. <clears throat> so what happened was that uh, we had at that time, maybe only five employees. Today we have 24. Not saying that we, that's a lot, but in our heydays, we had um, over 35, but uh, mm -hmm. That was so we had an airline type operation to continue, but that's another story. But going back, Hawaii Air Cargo is an air freight forwarder. And what is a forwarder? We do everything like an airline, the cargo department of airlines, we do everything, mm -hmm. but we don't have our own planes. We use all the scheduled carriers and uh, you know the United States and um, we use Hawaiian, and we also use um, all the um, cargo only aircraft. And believe it or not, we, we put freight on UPS in Spain if they have space. But, you know, during this pandemic, um, mm -hmm. give an example, in the Haiti, 2019, during Golden Week, which we just had, we had 20 flights to Japan uh, from Hawaii, mm -hmm. to all parts of Japan. Today, we have only one, just daily flights now. We only have one, and that's Hawaiian. Um, just not enough room, but believe it or not, the rates are fairly uh, good. You know, in other words, actually, if you ship regular quantity, and we've been shipping a lot to Japan recently, uh, hmm. every week we have consolidation, but we had uh, shippers going out there, and I tell people, believe it or not, if you look at the price per pound, it's cheaper than shipping to LA. And uh, hmm. why is because there's no cargo out of Honolulu to go to Japan. So whatever the airlines can get, they love it, so they give us a break in the price. Now, the thing is that people have to understand the industry, air car, and the airplane orders industry or the airline industry in the U.S. is not regulated. Hard to believe, but we have no regulation, so people can charge whatever they, they can sell. Mm -hmm. and that's how I've been, you know, fortunate in staying um, afloat today in business all this time from, from 82. Um, and uh, it's because we, Hawaii is a small community. Everybody talks. So <laughs> Other forwarders would, you know, they would give one guy a special rate just to keep the business, and another one they pay a higher price because they never complain or anything. But we audit bills for these people, uh, for the, the potential customers or even the regular customers, and because of that, they can compare. So what I tell them that, you know, you could save money if you did this way or that way. Or mm -hmm. this one company uh, that I went to see, I wanted to audit their bill of lading. They said, "Oh, I'm getting fifty cents a pound." And your rate is a dollar something. And no way I would be useful. <laughs> the, you know, I mean, but I'm going, um, I wouldn't be able to do business if I were charging, you know, 50 cents a pound. So what happened was that, um, you know, she, she chased me out. The, the <laughs> but then five months later, she wanted a favor because of one, there's another issue and she needed some help. And so I, I went back and she said, you need, can you, you still want to audit my bills? I said, yeah, make me a copy of one month of worth of air freight. And then after I got the copies, I studied it. I made an example. I went back uh, not a week later. And then what she I told her that had you used us for that month for those five shipments that they had, they were pretty large shipments. If you used us, you would have saved 
$4,000. And she said, what? But yours is more expensive. I said, 50 cents a pound. You're not, you didn't tell you about the pickup, delivery, uh, fuel surcharge, all kinds of add-ons. And, and, mm. and when you add all that up, you pay more. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, if nothing else, shop around. And uh, that's why classes make a big difference. When I give a class on how to select a carrier, even UPS and FedEx, they're good. We don't com- compete with them. But then if you look at that, some of the times they, they charge for bulky shipment, lightweight stuff. They have a hidden surcharge. We oh. use a formula that um, makes that bulky shipment way less, but then they mm. use something way more. So uh, wow. anyway, we're still around because in Hawaii, they all talk. So I can't give one guy a better rate than the other guy because when I see this one guy, he's just, <laughs> getting a good rate from this person. Yeah, get, yeah. Oh, then I see the, the, the competitor. I said, well, you should use that company because you can get the rate. <laughs> oh, I, I've been with the company a long time. I don't, you know, I mean, so in other words, there's no um, uh, getting around people talking. And um, that's why most of the chocolate people use us for, for Asia. Um, oh. You know, and so today, the biggest thing uh, going is Island Slipper. Well, actually, I shouldn't mention customer's name, but Island Slipper is doing <laughs> fantastic work in Japan. I That's mean, great. every week we have a couple of thousand pounds of sandals, of slippers going wow. to Japan. I mean, that's awesome. And so, you know, for the listing people, uh, if you want to get into business, you never know what's going to be um, mm. uh, available or what will hit. And um, But we ship honey. Of course, the ch- chocolate candy is all went down, but cookies have gone up. Uh, mm. We have all kinds of different things that we ship for, you know, we uh, suppliers here and then oh. um, so that's another story but going back with Hawaii Air Cargo our home office is in Honolulu, Honolulu our branch is in LA and um, like I say we have about 24 employees and um, um, but we take calls and we ship from all over the United States 75 percent of our business today is in from the mainland okay hmm. and uh, even with the name like Hawaii Air Cargo we ship in Thailand. I said, very five percent of my business is in Thailand. We don't ship huh. that much. So um, the other side is that twenty uh, percent is to Asia. We export. Mm. Mm-hmm. So uh, on that note, whenever you have something, that, and what part of our business or what do we ship as uh, of that seventy five percent that comes from the mainland? Uh, about sixty percent is construction material. So, mm-hmm. you know, when there was a downturn during the, uh, you know, virus or the, the pandemic, uh, things a little slow, slowed down, but for the last couple of months, it's jumped up again, this construction mm-hmm. back on. I mean, we used to have a busy season in, in December when um, hmm. people did remodeling. You know, they remodeled the house <laughs> for Christmas party, New Year's party, <laughs> so they want a special kind of toilet or shower. Well, it, so huh. we, we're flying things in because it's not that ex- more expensive than ocean freight. Ocean freight hmm. takes longer. And yes, if you have a, a lot of uh, items, which uh, that's expensive. But for the most part, uh, they have to, uh, they'd be surprised that everything might be cheaper. If you have hmm. items less than uh, 200 pounds, you might be better off shipping by air. And because ocean freight is somewhat regulated, so hmm. it's set pricing and it can be higher. Yeah, so, so you got like, going on. So what kind of questions <laughs> would you so have? Like, you mentioned um, Alan Slipper, which I'm so glad that they're doing so awesome. But you said they ship like thousands of pounds of stuff. And I would, like intuitively, you would think going by um, ocean freight would be cheaper. So what, what kind of um, customers do you target? Like who would make the most sense using Hawaii Air Cargo? Well, I'd like to say, construction material, we, um, one of our big, well, the, the biggest account is the remodeling of Lanai Island. Uh, huh. that Mr. Ellison there, he brings in stuff from all around, and uh, they, they do a lot of stuff. But at any rate, we, bring, we supply like the electrical supply houses, the plumbing supply houses, uh, and um, you know, all the different, we belong to the Flooring Association, Contractors Association, 
lot of all kinds of stuff to that we can get <laughs> in, you know. So with that in mind, there's um, um when you say what kind of area do we target, it's our customers are our best salespeople too. They tell their association or when we're there, they ask us, hey, by the way, what about this? Can sometimes you know we bring in 12 foot long rolls of carpet and you say, mm. why is that air flown? And we have to fly it in from say South Carolina where the mill is. Mm-hmm. It because the one that came in by boat to install in a hotel or something special, the dye it, it's got stains or it got damaged. So now oh. they got they can't just replace it whatever they have. They have to match the pattern, match the dye lot. So they have to go back. So we can we have to bring stuff like that in. Uh, special for that, or even uh, back when they were fixing the uh, all the walkways in Waikiki, uh, mm-hmm. they had all the special tiles. Most of it came in by uh, ocean freight. A lot of them got cracked, you know, because oh. of uh, for whatever reason. So we had to bring in a uh, huh. replacement tile. Uh, Is it because did, of the time frame that they needed quicker? They need to finish up, so they had to fly it in. They couldn't mm-hmm. wait for the replacement. And Alamana Center, when they did the uh, Ever side spending. Mm-hmm. If you go to the big stores over there, uh, they had glass that were etched. We flew in all those glass. That's wow. That's it. Because by the time they manufactured it, they needed it already. They were ready to install. <laughs> so it, it was really, I mean, that's that's the nature of it. But you know, when you have that kind of way, too, it's not so bad. But going back to uh, Japan, nobody uh, ships. Less than a container load. In other words, you have to ship full containers, uh, which oh, might be the smallest, be twenty footer or a forty footer to mm-hmm. get anything. But most of the ships that go to Japan, uh, it go, doesn't go directly to Japan. They might have to take it to the west coast and across. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a line like, let's say, Maxin goes to uh, Asia. I mean, China first because that's where the market is. They brought us mm-hmm. up to China. They go there, then they go back to Japan and bring back stuff to China and Japan. So uh, when you say we don't have much of an uh, alternative to it, and as a matter of fact, uh, we partner with several ocean freight uh, oh. So you know when they have air freight to give it to us, when they uh, want to, um, you know, have well, if the customer wants air freight and they don't have it, I don't want them to become uh, a competitor. So what they do is, <laughs> and they can build it. I mean, we'll build them, uh, the the foreigner, and then they mm-hmm. can build it. That's cool. So we, we, you know, we do a lot of that kind of stuff almost daily for people that supposedly ship ocean freight, but then they need uh, service on by air. I need something mm-hmm. coming sooner, or mm-hmm. sometimes I think missed the boat and it was just they needed it, and then mm-hmm. yeah, they did deliver the whole forty foot container to our terminal in LA. Oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, well, you know, it, it's it's uh, something that happens. You never know. But that's where in Hawaii, it's good to have uh, mm-hmm. the connections. The connection. yeah. So yeah. the airlines, going back to them, when I started Hawaii Air Cargo, I said Hawaii Air Cargo had financial space. I really thought I had no credit with any airline. But they had a core business. And so I said, mm-hmm. let's do it. But because when I was at Pan Am, and this is uh, an anecdotal story, but one of my jobs was uh, ticketing. And ticketing, too, I, I was a special ticket for the, the discount tickets to other airline employees. So huh. if you had, yeah, so the people that, you know, they want to go to at that time, they went flying from Hawaii. Uh, they were just domestic, but they would come to me and say, can I get a pass? I said, just write it on, get me a letter with the <laughs> company letterhead. And we were supposed to give passes only to people in uh, passenger service, uh, sales, the telephone sales, mm-hmm. uh, outside sales management like that, but not your cargo employees or your uh, maintenance people or anything like that. But I didn't care, you know, look, all of my <laughs> airlines, you know, what kind of connection? They all, hey, Brian, can you, they, they asked me to pass. I said, <laughs> give me a letter here. Oh, we can get it. Now, after they give it to me, can you upgrade me to first class? Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, I'll try it. If we have space in first class, why not? But because <laughs> of that, because of that, when I had problems, I said, you know, when I, at that time, I had Western Airlines in United, 
and away air cargo cash or certified check only because we mm -hmm. have no credit okay but then one airline had decided that from the customer side you can look over the counter and get oh air cargo cash and service they said would you mind taking it and not show it to the public but you know it took me three years a little over three years to get all my credit back and wow uh, so what i did was I made sure that the airline bill normally is 15 days on receipt of the, the billing. You have to pay. That's that's normal. Um, but a lot of people, big companies, they just let the airlines wait. But for me, I say no. Pay it on time. So we pay all our bills timely. And then, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact, as soon as we get it, we submit it. So I can't. They can't complain about my business. When I need favor, hey, I'm paying you right back. They say, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so you know, we can. But um, at any rate, um, that's... So how does that work? So Hawaii Air Cargo coordinates the shipment between multiple different airlines? Like whoever has space, you just we'll have to... Book it. We'll book it with the airlines. Wow. Make a confirmation. We have standing reservation. Like every day we have to give them a container, a, what we call a, a huge container. It's like an M1. At least oh, one. Oh, and they just load it into the... So we, lo we have to load it and we turn over the stuff. But we need... We're, we have obligated to give them at least one M1 container a night. This is for freighter, a seven percent freighter. And then what happens is that we have more. And so, you know, we always ask, can can I get this other stuff on? And sometimes you can do it um, because you know back around or something. But you surprised, uh, you know, because the way we take care of our, you know, rather than complaining to the airline, we always, you know, thank them for helping us and do that kind of stuff. And by doing that, uh, when we get into a buying, we can we can do it. <laughs> to give you a story mm. from the past, I was having a breakfast with at that time Governor Cayetano. That's how long ago. All the small <laughs> business people were having breakfast. And they said, any any other problem? I said, well, Governor, I don't know if you can solve this, but every December, all the airline cargo salespeople go on vacation and change it up. They don't want to be there because cargo doesn't move. The post office will take all the cargo space on all the airlines and they, and huh. nobody's allowed to put anything else on. Uh, oh, for and, all the and gifts and shipping. Everything is up. Yeah. And <laughs> I said, and look, all these businesses here, if they don't get their merchandise or Christmas sale in by Thanksgiving, they're not, they're not going to get it till after uh, New Year's. Mm. Well, he said, I never heard that. You know, the government say, I said, yeah. And everybody said, yeah, we can get the stuff when we need it. So, the governor was nice enough to talk to the postmaster. And the postmaster called me and uh, he, he says, can we meet? I explained the situation <laughs> because they didn't want to be the problem, but it was going on forever. You know, that mm -hmm. December, you couldn't get cargo on. As a matter of fact, one day I meet the, this Guam, I was shipping stuff to Guam uh, to the market and they didn't get the ocean freight shipment of bags, shopping bags. And he says, I don't have enough boxes to give them. So you gotta do something, but I knew working for the airlines that um, a lot of the car, um, post office mail, the containers are not full. They loaded at the uh, post office at the airport, but it's not full. So mm. I talked to the person working for the airline to choose to go on. If you have a half full, you know, container, let me know. So <laughs> she, I said, just let me know and, and route that container back to your cargo terminal. So I called the cargo office, talked to the supervisor. You know, I'm going to load about a thousand pounds of bags inside that. And so I did. I <laughs> put the bag, um, the mail bag. I put my stuff in the mail, the rest of the mail fit on top of it. And so they couldn't report to the post office that that container was something. It's just that when it got to Guam, they had the other Guam people, don't take it onto the post office. Go back to our place and remove the bags. Mm. Anyway, about two weeks later, I got a call from the person at the post office <laughs> and he was saying, I'm going to fire you and all this kind of stuff. You know, you wanted to find me. He said, do you know something? You're causing such an issue with us. They can't even get the emergency supplies. Mm -hmm. They get blood or something really, I mean, medical emergency, they have an option to take it. But anything else, it waits in the back. So wow. that from the time that we met with the post, postmaster, that was in January or February, December, the post office started to charter flights from Thanksgiving to uh, December 25th. They brought in a freighter. Most of the freight got on 
we could get space from that time. And hmm. that was a, you know, the second year they, they flew one from LA, a cargo and aircraft, and one from San Francisco. Today, no, but none of the airlines want mail because they don't want to be put in the position. So they don't build big on the mail contract. The post office has to contract with some of the freight traders you know, that come in. And uh, so long story short, some of the things that happened before we were, we were able to solve. So, but at any rate, we do have um, a lot yeah. of uh, things, but the business hurdles, like I say, we were able to get credit back from the airlines. We got support from the airlines. And, um, you know, like if you ship chocolate candy to mm -hmm. this of the mainland, the airlines don't guarantee that it's going to be kept in a temperature control mm. room, right? but we make sure that it's loaded, it's taken out to the plane when the plane's there. But we had a case mm -hmm. with one airline, they had somebody bringing in cargo from um, that area where the, the plane was going to take off. Going to, and so they saw this container up for that book this flight, and mm -hmm. he took it out. The plane from mainland wasn't even here. and. So we had to sit for one hour out in the <gasps> Oh ramp. no, yeah. Shipping was bad. Now the airlines yeah. don't pay claim, they just said it's not properly packed, packaged. Mm -hmm. But I have to pay the claim because that's my customer. But because of that, I got most of the, if not all of the car, uh, chocolate people ship with us. Even though my price was a few cents <laughs> or more, but they yeah. knew I would take care of the shipment. And wow. that's uh, things that, you know, we have to deal with. We can't make, uh, we can't just uh, take things out and expect the airlines to take care of them. Because mm. I was there one time we had live plants, and the live plants are going uh, also to Japan. And I told them, don't load this because, and I even left the container door open so anybody could see the plants, the potted plants. Mm. And then, um, somebody came by around with the uh, ramp, uh, with the tug. He closed the door and he took it out. And I went back to the office to get my camera. This is, uh, I didn't have my cell phone with me. So I went, came back, got my camera, went back to the airline. I said, what happened to my container of plants? Mm. The manager there said, oh, I don't know. Let me find it. He calls the supervisor out of the ramp. And the guy said, bring that back because the plane's not going to take off another hour and a half. So he brought it back. I said, so I asked the guy, how come you took it out? Yeah. He said, you know, I thought it was, I was going to the area for that flight. I said, mm. but you big iridescent looking uh, bright sign keep away from heat and cold mm. and so well, i thought it was for the freak coming in yeah he made some kind of excuse but i said <laughs> oh, you just gotta look this is like and you could see the plants i thought you would realize and you don't want it to get burnt on yeah. the plant. so anyway a lot of those things are stuff that we uh have to watch for but you know talk but this there's, there's a lot of issues we handle several international foreigners that uh, bring stuff in and we have to collect the money and then uh, remit that to the foreigner in, in Philippines, Japan or wherever. But um, we have uh, a shipment that came in. This is a, a story because the shipment came in, it was those small little trinkets that they sell at international marketplace, you know, the shell stuff and things like that made in the Philippines. So I collected the money from the consignee, this lady. She went back to load her car. You know, we, we helped her, in, but she opened her the boxes before she went in the car. Mm. And I heard her scream. So I went out and said, <laughs> oh. She said, that's not what I ordered. I went, I'm sorry, but I they want my check back or her check back. I said, I'm sorry that uh, I did my job of buying something. Mm -hmm. Your complaint is with your supplier. Mm -hmm. But I said, who does the buying over there? And says, oh, my nephew. I said, oh. <laughs> you know, things like that. And um, but at any rate, oh my God. nothing going on. But I have another horror story or near horror story where we have trade shows. We always tell people in business, if you have something to sell, do mm, go to the trade shows. shows. Go to the trade shows. And uh, so we had this big trade show in China. It was a hotel, restaurant, and food type of trade show. So first trade show of that type in, in Beijing. So mm. the state hey, we're going to buy a uh, place. They had four stories in this building. The fourth floor was all U.S. Uh, suppliers. And uh, so we had all kinds of people going. And uh, first of all, the Department of Ag, Gibbet are all going together. And they ordered some flowers. And we were always hired to ship this stuff and get it to 
wherever it needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So we got the, um, we had a whole bunch of flowers and uh, we had all kinds of stuff. But the flowers, first of all, we got them, they hired a decorator. Somebody to come and put it into a decoration. Mm -hmm. We ended up on the Sunday, the, the show starts on Monday. Sunday we're setting up on who's. The guy comes you know, with a vase that's maybe 10 inches round and only about two inches high. We had four foot <laughs> Box of you know, oh my god, ginger. We had yeah, pie, you know, all kinds of stuff. So right there, I said, you know, everybody go back to your hotel room. He said, bring your rubbish can. You know, oh so, my god! And, then, and we tied, we taped the rubbish can onto the sides of our uh, booth. And we, <laughs> but the the big thing is that that time we had a customer, and I was shipping uh, frozen dough to Japan. To Okinawa, Tokyo, mm -hmm. where they receive it, they freeze it, and then when they need it, they take out what they need with the frosting and the bacon. Mm -hmm. And it comes out terrific, you know. So the the French gourmet is the name of the company. They ended up making arrangements to bake the, the, the I guess the bakery products in the adjacent hotel that we were staying in. So I, that Sunday I was taking out uh hand truck of going out to the hotel next door. But then when I got to the exit, the security guard says, you can't go out. Of course, we didn't speak English, so we got a translator. And the guy says, this hasn't cleared customs yet. We need oh. to clear custom. I said, I oh, know, we're just going to cook it. I'm going to bake it and then bring it back. <laughs> and he says, you can't take it out. So, and the French gourmet was with me. And uh, we said, holy America, we can't do that. This is a whole thing. We wanted to sell it. So mm. finally, we went back up to the fourth floor. With the hand truck, and then I happened to see a company uh, with a pizza oven. You know those <laughs> crap pizza ovens? So I said, you know, can this work? He said, well, we can set it up, but all we need is propane because it's run on propane. Oh my God. And the, but they need something to bake. I said, I got something to bake. I showed them what I had. <laughs> End up, I said, we'll get the propane. And when the next morning we got there at 7 30 in the morning to set up for the nine o'clock opening. As soon as they walk into this exhibition hall, the aroma just mm. to a whole place of fresh baked goods. <laughs> no, we it was a three-day event. They sold out, but then this we had so many, we had to cut them on small pieces of people can taste. <laughs> they were lined up for the Hawaii booth. We had flowers, we had I'm not getting about candies, you know, we had juices, we had all kinds of Hawaii products. We were wow. one. After that first day, I think on the second day, the organizers went to the French go me, uh, next year is Shanghai. Uh, I'll give you any place <laughs> you want. We want you back. <laughs> okay. It's such a big hit. And of course, Hawaii too. But th that could have been really disastrous. But mm. it's so great that they used to work out of a basement on Fox Street Mall. And then oh, we wow. Here. And we're just shipping box here, box there. But they had to, they opened up a huge facility in Italy and it lasted only a couple of years, two years, because with the hit they made in, in the China stuff, mm -hmm. they hired a Chinese uh, lady who was at the show. She was basically there to interpret, but she mm -hmm. ended up, uh, they ended up shipping container loads from Italy wow. to Hong Kong. It led it to Hong Kong and from Hong Kong, they distributed all around. They got, so, they got so big that they moved out of Hawaii, they went back to the mm. Ocean freight is cheaper out of the West Coast to Asia than from Hawaii. Oh. Hawaii is their premium. <laughs> so, you know, that's uh, oh, uh, too issue. bad. Too bad. But, that, but that's, a, that's a success story that was really, really uh, terrific. Mm. So, at any rate, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for us, we, we try to do that. And now, the only other thing is that people, how can, how can we learn about some of the issues? Like I say, I, I lecture at the Chambers of Commerce on the mm -hmm. neighbor islands, and uh, they uh, talk to people interested. And uh, also, I uh, do classes with, uh, let's say, from your, uh, that the Homer Maxi Center yeah, over there. Yeah. I did classes on how to select your carrier, why use That's FedEx perfect. and UPS or the airline, what's the difference? I, mm -hmm. I'm not selling my company, but I'm just giving people a choice. <laughs> and uh, even the post office. And then I tell them, if you want, you know, need to help you out, audit your bills, 
whatever, I, you have to do it. And so this one lady said that, uh, well, yeah. when, She's already both. I think that's so important. I mean, it sounds like people don't even understand what they're paying for. Understand, but once they understand, so I did yeah. audit the lady was using post office. That yeah. That was the best way. The FedEx and UPS, their best contract rate was ten dollars more per box. Mm. Than the and the post office is doing a great job for them. And, yeah. Uh, you know, so things like that. That's oh, great. Yeah. No, so we would love to have you on, like when we do our import as the foreign yeah. trade zone we'd well, love we to have you on export. as one of our teachers <laughs> yeah, we were doing the exporting stuff but the importing is just as important because we got horror stories on that too because i did a <laughs> class the do's and taboos of importing and exporting and oh that would be perfect we'll have to do that again yeah anyway yeah. we are running out of time you have so many great stories i want to hear some more <laughs> but we'll have to leave it there <laughs> you've been we'll watching international again. hawaii yes definitely um, this was International Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. And today we've been talking with Brian Suzuki of Hawaii Air Cargo. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, Brian. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm and glad thank to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all of our viewers for International Hawaii. I'm Cindy Matsuki, your host, and we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of International Hawaii. Thanks. I'll see you next time.